Hi everyone, I'm talking to you now, and today we're making this massive pan of smoked mac and cheese. I don't know if you caught it, but this mac is so loaded that my camera shook when I dropped it. I got this recipe from this book, which is made specifically for the Weber Smoky Mountain Cooker. I don't usually make my mac and cheese with a bunch of extra stuff, but this recipe caught my eye anyway, for obvious reasons. So let's make it. First off, we need to shred a ton of cheese. A ton of cheese. This recipe calls for two cups of sharp cheddar, a cup and a half of Gruyere, a cup and a half of Fontina, which I've actually never heard of, and a cup and a half of Gouda, which fun fact is a Dutch cheese that's actually pronounced Hauda. It's fun to make little mountains of beautiful cheese, and now we have an entire cheese range. Oh yeah, we also need half a cup of shredded Parmesan, which I broke cheese law by buying pre-shredded. You can only ask so much of me on this channel, guys. Next, let's step outside and get the smoker smoking. The Weber Smoky Mountain is a charcoal smoker, so we need to light up a bunch of charcoal, which I prefer to do using a chimney starter and wax cube lighters. Works every time. We immediately get some beautiful smoke and beautiful smells filling the backyard. And those coals will be ready in about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I have bacon ready in a parchment lined baking sheet. And that'll go in the oven at 450 for about 15 minutes. Next, it's time to cook an entire one pound package of elbow macaroni, which we will keep on the al dente side since this is gonna be smoked later as well. Oh look, the bacon's done. I did a half a pound here, even though the recipe called for one pound, but keep in mind, you're lucky I'm listening to this part of the recipe at all. So just be happy that I'm even considering half a pound. Okay, I'll chop this up and then we can get back outside. It's time to dump the charcoal into the bottom section of the smoker. For longer cooks, you would also have a bunch of unlit charcoal in here as well, but we don't need much today. Next, we make a little mountain of charcoal and put the middle section in place. And inside the middle section, there's two grill grates and a large water pan, which acts as a buffer between the hot coals and the food at the top. Smoking is about low indirect heat, so that's what this is designed for. Now we just wait for the smoker to preheat and hit 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Apparently all the waiting is making Storm tired, so she took a nap while we make the sauce. This is a half a stick of butter melting, which is very fun. And then we're gonna whisk in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. After a couple minutes, it's time to whisk in three cups of milk, which you cannot see because of my massive forearm blocking the view. We're supposed to bring this to a boil, but make sure you watch it carefully because it will boil up fast. Okay, saved it just before it burnt. Now here's another weird call in my opinion from the recipe. It says to add an eight ounce package of cream cheese, which I tried to cube up to melt better, and also add the half cup of Parmesan and season with salt and pepper. And uh, there we go, we have our sauce. Now the fun begins. We have our cooked macaroni in a large bowl and we're gonna add in the chopped bacon and then the cheddar, the Gruyere, the Gouda, and the Fontina. That order might be completely wrong because I have no idea which is which now. Now drizzle that sauce all over the big bowl of cheesy paradise and mix it up. This is probably my favorite part next to eating it. Now we're gonna need a greased half-sized pan to hold all this in and get ready for smoking. Just kidding, we're actually adding even more cheese. This is some that we saved from the original Cheese Mountain. Okay, now it's ready for smoking. Ah, uh, wait, one more thing. We need a half a stick of melted butter. Fun fact, when I pulled this bowl out of the microwave, the cold air hit it and it exploded in my face. So I'm still recovering here as I begrudgingly add a half a sleeve of crackers to this butter. The recipe calls for an entire sleeve of cracker crumbs and I once again, I compromise with half a sleeve. Same amount of butter though, for some reason, minus the excess dripping off my face, of course. Okay, so now it's time to smoke. The Weber is sitting really stable at 275, which is perfect. I added a little chunk of hickory wood at the bottom pile of charcoal to get our smoke rolling, and in we go with the pan. We're getting a good stream of transparent bluish smoke coming out of the wide open vents, which is exactly what we want. One hour and a couple beers later, it's time to peek under the Weber, and oh my God, that looks so good. Let's take this cheesy bounty inside and see what we're working with here.
Okay, well, it's really, really good. The consistency, smoky flavors, and loaded cracker and bacon pieces are all working together really nicely. There's definitely something off with one of the cheeses though. I'm thinking it's the Fontina flavor that conflicts with everything else, in my opinion. So I'd, I'd admit that and just add more cheddar instead. But overall, this turned out amazing and really kind of converted me to the loaded casserole style mac and cheese. If nothing else, this dish is a spectacle and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and let me know what you'd like to make next on Sunless Kitchen.